So, we're going to be loading into the game here. Deviate <laughs> versus Belaine. Uh, how familiar are you guys with these two players? I mean, they've been around competing for a long time. They must have, mm -hmm. must have come across some of your tournaments as well at some point in time. But in your guys' impression, is there one that's further ahead than the other? Or do you think this is going to be an even match kind of player skill decision making wise? Um, for me, I, I'm very familiar with uh, Deviate. Uh, yeah. Deviate has been playing in many many tournaments not so familiar with Belaine, even though i have spoke with him a few times uh but dv8 is an incredibly good and consistent player and he hasn't really been playing as much late, uh, like in the last i guess couple of months but it's actually really good to see him back absolutely like we we used to see dv8 all the time in our chats in all of our community tournaments all that kind of stuff he always puts up good numbers he's we even did an interview with him once where he said you know yeah. he's a very competitive player you know, he really likes taking his time and building his decks and playing and playing and playing and playing and playing. So I'm, I'm sure he's very well tuned for this meta and uh, it shows, right? He's at the top of the winner's bracket, ready to go. So so we got Dirt Rune versus Neutral Forest. Now, this matchup, I think, kind of comes down to the amount of burn that Dirt Rune can do because <laughs> and it also comes down to like Mutagenic Bolt and or Calamitous Curse. Uh, right. Against the Beauty and the Beast because if they don't have an answer to Beauty and the Beast, the, the game just kind of gets locked up. And you know, thanks for playing. Right. Next game. Right. It, <laughs> a lot of it has to do with Dirt Rune ignoring what Neutral Rune does for a long period of time, like trying not to trade, trying to go face as much as possible. The big wrenches are, of course, Aaron, like we see in the hand of Deviate, um, and like you said, Mutagenic Bolt to kind of get through those big boards and just deal extra damage. So this is the matchup I was kind of talking about beforehand, too. This is kind of like the wild card matchup. So whoever wins yeah. this, I think, actually has a really good chance to take the entire match here. Well, we do see, as we already said, that PDK was banned on both sides. And we see that <laughs> yeah, they, both they know that. <laughs> they know. They're like, hey, man, I'm, I don't want to fight that, bro. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter what your configuration is. I don't want to fight that. So If, if there was any good warning, all of the disaster players brought PDK. So far, we've seen all the disaster players ban PDK. So just warning, yes. guys. Just warning. <laughs> <laughs> and PDK. Okay. Uh, but we do see they both have their mid swords. So we're going to actually get to see that, you know, we might even get to see the mirror, you know? That's right. That, I think that'll be really interesting to see. And like I said, they each have like slight tech choices that differ from each other. So they each have their own style and that's really important for newer players. Even if your team, especially in this kind of a game where you have access to 40 cards, you don't have to worry about your play points. You're always going to get one during your turn, making a configuration of a deck the way you know how to win with it is more important than just having the best quote unquote version of the deck more often than not. Now, I want to point out something that uh, DV8 did. DV8 traded his carrot to get his carrot back into his hand after playing the Pure Hearted Singer so that he could have enough cards to play Beauty and the Beast next turn. Mm -hmm. And as we can see in Blaine's hand, he doesn't actually have an answer to Beauty and the Beast. So a, a slam of Beauty and the Beast and pre-Evo if Blaine doesn't draw an answer in that next turn, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Yep. A lot of trouble. And we do see that there is some semblance of burn for Blaine, but is it really going to be able to carry him through? Well, it, the burn won't work against uh, Beauty and the Beast. So, and he didn't really do a lot of damage before now. So it's not like he's going to be able to just, you know, start burning away and ignore the beauty and the beast. Like, he's like something he has to deal with. He has to be <laughs> right. able to get something to get it because, you know, if DVA, if that goes unchecked, wrap it up. Next match. Wrap it up. That's right. <laughs> you, we might just see Belaine doing the thing that you don't want to be doing when you're trying to pressure your opponent and play defensively, especially against, like, if you have to use all of your Evo points and all of your followers just to run into beauty and the beast so you don't die to it, what's going to be left over to actually finish off your opponent? And we right. see that, you know, DV8 still at 18. It's not like his life's been pressured that much yet. And we're already on Aaron turn. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's going to get harder and harder for Belaine here. Be kept pure. Well, one of the things about Burn Rune that can be incredibly difficult to deal with is simply, uh, when you're playing against it, I mean, is simply mm. uh, the fact that they just melt your face off. 
You know, it's burn. You know, <laughs> right, right. it's burn. It's called burn room Melt for a reason. Right up. Terminator <laughs> style. Right Throw off. him in the lava pit. <laughs> yeah, this is the whole face just gets melted off. Uh, but That's we right. do see that Deviate has heal in hand with the errands should he need it. Um, mm -hmm. We also see that Beauty and the Beast may not necessarily be the best line of play. Um, we do Mostly actually because this is going to be the easiest turn, right? For Belaine yeah. to be able to answer it. Still has an Evo point left, still has followers in play, but decides to go with it anyway. Yeah, this is what I find just a little bit questionable. We do know that the uh, Conjure our Guardian is in hand, so he will mm -hmm. be able to Evo the Conjure Guardian and trade his uh, Alchemist and the Guardian into the Beauty and the Beast to get rid of it. And then, like, what does DBA do from this? He just, you know, just starts filling the board back up. You know, you know what I mean? Interesting. He did not, he did not go for that. Wow. I wonder why. Choosing, I guess uh, he knows that there's no way for that Conjure Guardian to actually get blown past by the Beauty and the Beast, or at least he's hoping not. Uh, this is right before turn eight, before we get the extra Evo point back from Aaron. So if he doesn't have a removal spell immediately uh, for this, like Elf Twins Assault, then he's going to have to ram his Beauty and the Beast into it, and it's going to give even more damage and presence for Belaine. So I actually really like that play. It's a gamble. Yeah. But it's going to pay off here. Yeah, it does end up paying off. He rolled the dice and, you know, you rolled well. <laughs> this yeah, this rolled is very really well. good. Um, very well. well, we we do know. And, and what I'm actually finding interesting in uh, DV8's list, I'm sorry, I kind of lost my train of thought there, um, is this Elf Girl Liza. Yeah. <laughs> very that is different really interesting. approach. Don't forget. Yeah. Yes. And I like it. Very We've been talking about Elf Girl Liza a lot. Elf Girl Liza is just really helpful against every deck. It's really good against PDK or Dragon in general. It's really good against Elf Twins Assault. It's really good against pretty much everything. Dirt Rune, you know what I mean? Like, it just lets your followers stay in play and makes your opponent do a lot more to finish what you have off. And we see Goblin Mount Demon, so tons yeah, of wars. Yeah, Goblin Mount. <laughs> yeah, tons of anti-damage stuff. Like, this is great. I like this. Yeah, he's basically said, I'm not dying to aggro today. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, one of the problems that neutral force does tend to have is that it does kind of suffer against the those aggro decks Levi. on those Don't turns forget. you want to play that beauty and beast you can't against those aggro decks because they're just going to ignore it and hit you in the face so right. we're seeing we're actually seeing right now an example of a time where he wouldn't want to play a beauty and a beast if he had one, right that is this is a perfect example of the time he wouldn't want to play it he is his opponent has two four uh power guys on board he's at eight i love the lies of play right here these are the top decks that Belain needs here mutagenic bolts dance of deaths nothing yet um, he's not gonna have a lot more time to get them because deviate's gonna start being able to trade with this board very effectively not only that, but even if Blaine managed to get something like a Master Mage Levi or Levy or whatever, he wouldn't have been able to kill any of the board because of Elder right. Eliza. That's right. So only only big kill spells would have worked there. Oh, and another Beauty and the Beast, but he won't. Uh, he'll get the buff, I believe, or is it the? No, he gets the uh, resistance. Protection. The buff. Yeah. Yeah. And this is perfectly uh, fine. Angel of the Word cleaning up Master Mage Levy, being able to clean up the rest of the board. This is a great turn. Yeah, Belaine's hand's looking pretty bad right now. It's sitting on two yeah. sigils. Uh, feels bricks, man. But as we know, Wizardess of Oz is this ever-present thing that Dirt Rune can draw into and just completely change the course of the game. But he's going to need to do it soon because that Beauty and the Beast is basically saying... With any other followers in play, you're going to be dead in just about three attacks. So that's yeah. your clock. Well, unfortunately, this too. dance death does not feel great because he can't take out the one card that he needs to kill. <laughs> right. right. So it's like, well, do I hold it? I don't think so. I think you do have to kill something, but... I think you do. If, if nothing yeah. else, just preserve the clock and to get cards yeah. out of your hand to make Wizard of Savage just that much better. Yeah. And just another sigil, of course, you just never want to see that. I know those feels. I'm a Dirt Room player. Yep. Yeah. Dude, feels terrible. And this is kind of one of those times where, uh, you know, DV8 doesn't want to overcommit to the board. Because, again, Mutagenic Bolt is a thing. So if right. he overcommits to the board, he can end up killing himself. 
That's right, gotta be careful. That's the only thing he realistically has to play around right now. Wizard of Oz, you can't really play around, right? Like, whatever they get, they get. So, play around what yeah. you can. So, just on a, a little bit of a dirt topic, I know that uh, <laughs> you're kind of like off and on about dirt and all that, but my question, to you is, <laughs> my question to you is, what type of card would you want to make to uh, to uh, to help dirt along if you were to make a card for dirt well i want to see dirt go in a direction away from aggro like i'm not a big fan of playing cards like piercing rune demonic strikes and things like that uh, i'd rather it go a little bit more defensive um and i realistically think they have the board control options they need they just need to shore up like their mid game package like halo golem's good carl's good but you don't really have a lot of other tools in those slots whatsoever right. gingerbread house doesn't feel very good price of magic really doesn't, doesn't feel very good you know what i mean like there's just a lot of this early to mid stuff that just doesn't feel good and i think that's where it needs to shore up it's end game is great you've got professor of taboos calamitous curse you know what i mean master mage levi so many good things at the top end give me some more stuff in the mid game but here we sure. see the lane didn't draw what he needed to draw, deviate doing what he needed to do and finishing out the game. Yep. It's very, it's just like we said earlier, Beauty and the Beast, man. You know, yep. they, it's almost like they always have that second one. You always hope they don't. And then they <laughs> jam the second one. And you're like, oh, I just got rid of the first one. <laughs> and I just drew my dance of death and I can't yeah. kill it. <laughs> I can't kill it. Oh. Yeah, that feels terrible. Terrible. Right, well, we're going to so, get to see that mid sword. That's right. So mid sword versus dirt rune. I actually think that dirt rune has a slight advantage here because sword doesn't have any healing. Like those errands really came into play last game for deviate. Sword does have the wards, but if there is a consistent burn out of Belaine's deck, then he won't be able to actually heal back up out of lethal range late in the game. So this is an interesting match. Well... Uh, the healing thing you mentioned is definitely prevalent here. And not only that, but uh, Master Mage Levy is incredibly strong against sword. Yes. Uh, it, it, all forms of sword. <laughs> it does not right. just... They try to board sword. fill. Master Mage Levi does exactly the opposite of that and board clears. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. Very good. And we get to see one of your favorite cards from sword right Blade now. Right. <laughs> Bladed Hedgehog. So for everyone who doesn't know Bladed Hedgehog, whenever enemy follower is destroyed, it gets plus one, plus zero. So when you combine it with cards like Blitz Lancer, Geno, uh, even Shield of Flame, Whole Soul Swing, stuff like that, he gets really big and really difficult to kill. Yep, and we get to see a nice little... Oh, okay. Decides to not trade here. Interesting. I, I, think, I think him not trading is fine. Um, yeah, I think it's fine. He still would have protected gets... his Mars, is what I think the only consideration is. But I guess he doesn't really care because Bladed Hedgehog keeps getting pumped anyway. So either follower right. that stays in play gets advantage. So not a huge loss there. This would be a great Lux turn, I think. Just get, you know, just play it now. He's under no pressure at the moment. So, I mean, unless he wants to start pushing damage right this second, he's under no pressure. He can, oh, he just decided to do that and i guess he's gonna just push for the damage seems good only only reason i think that's the choice is a bladed hedgehogs in play if that was not the follower in play i don't know if that would have been the play but he also has already council card knights albert and mars to kind of push into the later games so i don't think he's really worried about the cards in hand at the moment it's fair that's fair i for me it's more like hedging against levy <laughs> the master sure, levy sure. I mean. um of course. but hey you know that's why he's playing and I'm commentating. <laughs> That's right. Circa, circa January, good old Levi Piercing Rune doing its uh, good board clear phenomenon hey. that it does. Even after Once... the change, it's still good, man. <laughs> right. People were clamoring <laughs> for Levi and Piercing Rune to get changed for a long time. They finally did change Piercing Rune before it actually got reduced to one cost instead of two. So even more potent. You could play like several Piercing Runes and Levi's and possibly even the Crimson Sorcery all in the same turn. It was that quite was brutal, quite dude. a beast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was so brutal. You're like, where did my board go? I just worked so hard <laughs> up to this point. Turn four, my board is gone. It gone. was like you and you and I took four. <laughs> yeah, I took four. My board is gone, and I can't do anything about that. I got wasted evo point. They take out their levy because I can't do anything, and I can't push any damage. You just felt terrible. And my opponent <laughs> didn't even attack me this turn. How is this? What's going on? <laughs> Right, and they didn't even attack me. 
It no. felt miserable. So we are going to get to see uh, that Master Mage Levy or even Mutagenic Bolt put in some work. Uh, he can't. Yeah. See, this is actually why I really feel like Lux would have been better earlier because he can't really get the quote unquote full value out of it that he would have gotten if he had played right. it on the turn or when he wasn't really under any pressure. Absolutely right. And we get to see Mars in full effect here on both power and defense here. Strength and yeah. defense. Mars is a card that I wanted to see played. It, it, like, for a while now. Yes. Goodbye, board, by the way. I wanted to see <laughs> By the way. <laughs> I wanted to see Mars played for so long. And I'm actually glad that, you know, we could see it now. Like, the people are mm -hmm. moving in the direction of that. It, not only the counter sword, but I don't... Like, and that actually kind of informs to their ban, right? They know that mid sword's bad against PDK, so they just right. ban it. <laughs> so right. that's actually really smart. I like that. I just thought about that. Oh, yeah. One other inclusion, too, staircase in mid sword, pretty potent. Like, sword doesn't have a lot of card draw opportunities, and staircase is very cheap. It, and mid sword specifically doesn't play any other one drops. So it kind of gives you this nice little hedge that if you can't really capitalize in the mid game, you'll have a lot of late game options. And the late game options for Sword are really good. You've got Alberts, you've got Fangblade Slayer, you've got Awita's Command, you know what I mean? Like you've got a ton of stuff, even round table assembly now, just to push out so much value. So- oh, Talk about a card I have so much soul toward right now. <laughs> round table assembly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a salt inducing card. Uh, we yeah. won't see it this game, but of course you guys have seen it before where it, uh, you know, puts two Juliets into play with an Ephemera in play, and then, you know, oh, you know how that goes. Just, that old song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yep, we heard this one before. <laughs> I really like the interaction between Geno and Staircase as well. Like, you get three followers that die almost immediately because they're so small and get that staircase to pop really quickly. So very, very nice little interaction. And I think that Deviate's actually in a really bad spot here. Uh, all right, not, I'm sorry, not Deviate, but Belaine's in a really bad spot here because so much card advantage already has Albert and Belaine really hasn't done that much yet. No, he hasn't. He's basically just been hanging on by a thread throughout the majority of this game. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, it's not looking much better. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really not. Um, right. He does have access to the Mutagenic Bolt, but do you really want to be playing Mutagenic Bolt on a turn that you know? Well, he's playing it. Wow. Mm -hmm. On a turn that you know that your opponent has an Albert, you know, or could have an Albert, or might have an so, Albert because that just popped. I, I really like this play because A, he's ahead right now. Obviously, we know that Albert's going to change things, but it gives him the best opportunity to top deck into a win. Why? The reason I say that is because he gets to use his Evo on offense. The Flame Rats will deal damage, and he has a Dance of Death in hand. So if, again, he draws something like a Wizard of Oz, he can really push through and maybe win the game. But we'll see. That's fair. But right now, he's it's not looking so hot. You know, no pun intended on the fact that they're called Flame Rats. But <laughs> it's, not looking, it's not looking that great right now. Um, and we do see that DBA has yet another Albert in hand. So, in the event that this one doesn't do it, which it won't. <laughs> no. He's got another one unlock. This one won't do it, but because of the way Belain played, he basically pressured all of the damage to go to his board instead of face. So, even after this Albert hit play, the Dance of Death will remove it. The second Albert's not lethal, so it buys him some extra time, and he does have a Grimnir for next turn to kind of help clean up the board. Well, he does have the Grimnir. Um, I should love the Family Slayer player here. No, okay. no reason to, I, no reason to play that. Uh, no reason Perfect. to play Albert right there. Yeah. And because this, this also is very an resistant. Near oh. Oh wow, what a draw. Here now we let's go. just see what he gets off of it. Nothing. No. <laughs> that is the not bricks. what you want. Go oh. rune bricks. Oh my goodness, that is not what you want. That is the, that's where you just put your hand in your head and you're just like. <sighs> that's when Wizardus takes you to Oz and you find all the munchkins instead of all the magic. You know what I mean? Right. That's, that's exactly what just happened. <laughs> yeah, that that is... He knows he's dead, too. Like, oh, yeah, he's he like... <laughs> yeah, this is... Yeah, extra crispy dead, man. Yeah, just... Extra, he's finished. Albert is not how you want to lose, unfortunately. When you're fighting against swords, you just kind of have to expect it. 
That's what it is. Deviate. What a what an amazing gameplay right there. That was amazing, amazing gameplay on his part. Deviate with the win on mid sword. And we talked a little bit about mid sword before we jumped into the broadcast, but it held its own against Burn Rune. Um, what do you think are some of the big key cards that changes mid sword in this particular expansion compared to the previous expansion? Because as we know